for ducking 50 bucks for fucking Uh Live from around the world, this is your number one gaming station. And just ignore what you just heard. That uh, was somebody <laughs> completely... <laughs> that was somebody in the, uh, in the radio station who is completely out of control. And uh, that's the kind of fun we have uh, during our breaks here uh, at Half-Life Radio. Sorry about that. Uh, Does anybody mind can Arnold... Hey, hold on a second. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, can you kick that guy out? Oh, I've already, I've already done it. I just uh, tied him up with my jumper cables and went... <laughs> and shocked the crap out of him. And then I kicked him out the window and he went... Splat. Excellent. See, that's the kind of... Uh, we don't mess around here at Half-Life Radio. We, we get things done. Um... This is Half-Life Radio. We're live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. GMT. This show repeats uh, at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time, 4 a.m. GMT. And it'll repeat tomorrow at 8 o'clock p.m. GMT for the people in the U.K. Uh, it'll be prime time for them. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, tomorrow, XCOM Last Hope Mod will be here. Sunday is Earth Special Forces. And we will also have the Half-Life Mobsters mod. That, that is also on Sunday, right, Timmy? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Half-Life Mobsters will be on on the second slot. Uh, you'll find them around about 6.30 Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. So you guys should tune in. Last time we had them on, we had a great time with them. Excellent. Okay. And while we were talking with Frontline... Force, also known as Defiance, uh, Argyle was talking with Ghost Freeman and uh, live on the radio during that interview. Uh, I guess you were on AIM. Uh, what did Ghost have to say? Thanks, Andy. This is Argyle with Half-Life Radio, and currently I am live in front of my computer looking at the screen, and I was talking to Ghost Freeman. You all know he's a radio legend here with us. And what he had to say, the conversation started, was, you there? And he said, yeah, hi. And I said, hi. And I said, when are you coming back to the radio? And he said, outlook not so good. And I said, why are you, a fucking eight ball? And then he said, and I said, why not? See, we miss you. You're a legend, man. He says, I know. I'll be back in due time. And I said, what happened? Why, why the break? He said, I need it. I deserve it. And that is the latest. And I just messaged him, asking him if he is listening. And he currently has not responded. But it says he's online, so I don't know what happened. He might have lost the keys to his bedroom once again, and he might be out of his bedroom. <sighs> well, we'll have to play that uh, song that he was singing uh, later on in the show tonight. For those that missed that, we do have a recording of Ghost Freeman singing the uh, Like a Virgin uh, song by Madonna. And um, we got this recording... Uh, well, well, we'll just say that somebody uh, who wants to remain anonymous wants to, you know, uh, to send in this recording to us. And we, we have it, and we're going to play it uh, later on. Um, with us tonight is uh, Eternal Silence. We have Bush and Mac Mech Warrior. Is that right? Mad Mech Warrior? Yep. Hey. Boy, say Hi. that five Say that five times. Mad Mech Warrior. Mad Mech Warrior, Mad Mech Warrior, Mad Mech Warrior, Mad Mech Warrior, Mad Mech Warrior. Is that five? I don't know. Mad Mech for short. Well, welcome to Half-Life Radio, and uh, tell us about uh, your mod. Oh, and by the way, before we go there, we are taking your questions live on irc.gameshouts.net, and we're in the radio channel. So, uh, for those that don't know anything about your mod, tell us about it. Okay, well, basically, uh, Eternal Silence is a space mod. So, we're gonna, we're basically, it's really open ended the gameplay. We're taking uh, two ships, and it's basically a free for all between the two ships. You're gonna have infantry, you're gonna have the little small ships that are fighters fighting around, and you're gonna have the huge capital ship weapons that you can shoot also. So, uh, the that's basically the the short version of the mod. It's much co more complicated than that, but uh, I'll let you guys go with the questions. Is this for Half-Life One or Two? Sorry if you mentioned it before. 
it's definitely Half-Life 2. There's no way this mod is going to work with Half-Life 1. Uh, we moved from Battlefield uh, a few months ago. We released there. Uh, that game is just horrible for modding, but uh, we did it and we moved. <laughs> so, so we're here now. And uh, so basically, in, in Eternal Silence, there you have like your your three three roles. There you have your pilot, which is your your guy that's fighting there. You have your captain, which is kind of like you know. Um, in natural selection, where you have your captain that gets the overview of the entire map. So basically, your captain is going to have uh, an overview of the entire uh, space field there, and you're going to be able to um, see your ships in like a home world point of view. And uh, yeah, there's fighting inside ships too. That's that's the main aspect. Like that's what we started on. Like uh, we started this mod, uh, I think November of last year. And it's been developing from there. And uh, this summer we did a total redesign. We've done uh, lots of concept art, lots of uh, brainstorming. So, I mean, uh, if you go on our website, www.eternal-silence.net, uh, you can find there's a link in the about section to our design doc, which is huge detail in there. It's um, I think like 20 pages of just talking about the gameplay and the general graphics so uh, if you're really really like interested by this idea there you could go ahead and check that out I think it's a good read yeah you would have been in deep trouble trying to do that on Battlefield it's a really great game and all but it is like you said absolutely horrible for modding I would definitely concur yeah the original concept was, was much uh, less elaborate than the current one we're basically just like gluing ships together, but uh, this time around we've gone all out concepts and uh, you know lots of new gameplay. Uh, basically, it's like new, new mod. Nobody has ever played anything like this. It combines strategy, uh, fighting, and it's like space simulation, and, like combination. Like it's uh, like we haven't actually started coding or anything. We're actually uh, talking with Valve right now to get the SDK, but uh, all our gameplay elements are laid out. And uh, we think it's going to work. It should work. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly got to tell you, I'm actually ex really excited about this mod. Uh, about two years ago, I attempted a, a very similar mod uh, with the current Half-Life engine, and it just didn't work because the I tried to create a very open-ended, large map that was basically just space and that's all it was and it was just a large skybox of nothing but space and you could fly around infinitely um, but I, I couldn't get the gaming physics down, the, the movement down um, very well and of course my, my coding knowledge back then was very limited um, but uh, my models were, were actually pretty cool, I had a lot of nice little space models but anyway I, I just, this, this believe me this really really excites me now that I, now that I see that someone may actually be, release something uh, that I was really passionate about a few years ago. That it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really ambitious, but uh, I think we can pull it off with the team that we we have formed up right now. We have a bunch of great artists, uh, Deet, Satan's, all like practically professional artists. They're all in like uh, university, you know, taking arts degrees. So all really good with models and skins. Uh, some of them are even taking game design courses. So that's great. Uh, tons of concept work. We were laying everything out before we start doing anything, just to make sure that everything works. The core idea is, you know, believable and it'll play okay. Uh, we we have like we've been working on things like uh, you know systems to get rid of like smack darts. You know, your standard like guy that just wants to ruin the game for everybody. Um, like some of these things. I mean, like like a uh, planet side, like where they had the the. Um, the grief system where uh, if you like killed too many players, too many uh, of your team's players, your gun would eventually go dead and you get weapon lock. So those are some of the ideas we're throwing around because this mod really team based. Um, so if you have like crappy teammates, you're you're pretty much screwed. So we're gonna try to like bring down the uh, you know TKing down to a minimum, and uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, got two questions from IRC. How many weapons are in the mod? And two, is it a little like Homeworld? Uh, weapons in the mod, there are about 
five or six weapons per side, uh, two sides. We're backing this uh, this uh, gameplay up with a, a nice story there that uh, Bush is writing. Uh, it should be really nice. Uh, it's gonna have every battle that we feature is gonna be um, a battle from the story. So if you're really into it and you wanna like you know, get suck deeper into the world, you can read the story and you know really get into it. We might even consider a single player campaign later on, but um, it's really up in the air right now. We're really on to concentrate on the multiplayer. As for the other question about home world, um, the captain is going to have a special interface where he's going to be able to you know order uh, players around, you know, uh, set waypoints, kind of like in home world. But uh, the captain also has the view where he can um, you know zoom into his like own ship and use the internal sensors and get like kind of an inside view of that. Uh, we're going to be using uh, material proxies that Valve talked about to get like a kind of x-ray thing going where you could have multiple levels that you're looking at. So instead of having the natural selection where you're, the entire map is on one level, you're actually going to have multiple stories. Uh, here's a question. Uh, what kind of control, like I know you just mentioned waypoints and stuff, but what kind of actual control does the captain have over its team? Uh, he's mostly um, like he controls it the uh, the action like an RTS. So he's gonna have uh, he's gonna have uh, an overview world. He doesn't really have any direct control over his players. I mean, he can set uh, he can set uh, like what ships spawn at which spawn points. So you're gonna be able to set like uh, like if you want like if the captain decides to do a, a strategy that involves lots of bombers, he can decide to spawn more bombers. But uh, of course, there's a limit on the amount of bombers that you have. So each you're gonna have a ship count at the beginning, and uh, each ship will have a set amount at the beginning, and you you can only use that much that amount of ships. So I mean, if you like lose all your bombers, no more bombers for the rest of the game. Um, so the captain has a bit of indirect control that way. He can also set squad leaders and uh, assign like uh, groupings there and get those groupings move around. But I mean, usually the player he follows waypoints usually because that's pretty much how you beat every other game. So. We're hoping that'll work. I don't know if this has been asked yet, and so if it is, just go ahead and yell at me or whatever. <laughs> um, but you're talking about the um, different players would spawn on, or the two different teams would spawn on their uh, motherships, or I can't think of what you call them. Uh, the bigger, the big ships that all the players and everything are inside of. Will there be a capability to move the ship? Like the the big ships. Uh, yep. The captain has the ability to. Well, the captain's basically he basically controls his his big ship there, so he can move it around. Um, moving speed is going to be really slow just to bring down the lag there, so you're not like uh, insane lag inside the ships. Um, he can also like fire the the big cannons, if you will. Basically, the the point of the game is basically the point of the game is uh, blow up the enemy ship or capture it or like um, whoever runs out of ship. Ships first loses. So if you run out of ships, ships in the middle of the game, then it's over. If your ship gets entirely captured, like uh, every single control point inside your ship is uh, the enemies, you lose. And if your ship is blown up, well, you lose. I think you're getting Ranger a little bit too excited over here. He's jumping up and down the studio. Uh, but I got a question from Bongo in our IRC chat. Uh, he's asking, how are you guys planning on stop the ships from flying out of the maps or hitting the walls of the maps? Uh, we're probably going to implement a system similar to Battlefield where uh, you can get like a 10 second timer there. And uh, after that 10 second timer, if you don't get out of the uh, kind of... Uh, uh, out of the, if you get out of the battle no zone there... Zone. Right, the no-fly zone. Um, uh, you'll... Like, you'll your ship will spawn back to its initial place, or like you won't blow up because that would be obviously very cheap there. But um, yeah, we're gonna keep the ships inside their playing field. Either that, or we're gonna go with a, like a constant scrolling of the map. So you go to one end of the map and you pop up the other end. I was just thinking about that. That's a really good idea. And yes, Timmy, I am jumping around because I like the idea of big, huge spaceships shooting at each other with big old weapons and explosions and the ships and yeah. Don't worry, I am too. I, w I can't wait to play this. Sounds like a really fun mod. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, one of the, the um, one of the main ahead, things Bush. we're really trying to okay we're we're trying to accomplish here is uh, a lot of variety. You know, you have games like Counter Strike and TFC and whatnot, and I could go on, but 
you know, they they all definitely reach a certain point where you you feel just you know kind of bored of the same thing over and over and over again. Certainly, you can have different um, you know things go on while you're playing, and you have a certain amount of variability. But with this, we're trying to definitely um, introduce enough uh, different you know things. Basically, it's it's there's going to be so many very different ways to supplement your team while you're playing that it's going to feel like maybe you could play for two months in a certain strategy and be, you know, fulfilling this certain role, and maybe all of a sudden another, you know, a month you decide I'm going to try something new, and it can be a totally different game for you because there's so, going to be so many different um, factors that will tie into how you're playing and, and how the game goes along. And, and on top of that, also the fact that there will be very specific uh, even game types. Like like Mad McCrory was saying, you know, there's going to be like capture points or you know, destroying the ship and everything. But since this is being backed by story, there will be certain maps that will supplement maybe a very specific uh, instance. Like maybe you'll have to work together in a different way. Almost like if, if you ever play Counter-Strike, you got like the VIP maps. That's There's one map with that. And they're basically that's the only one that everybody ever plays where it's got VIP. Well, just like that, there's going to be certain maps where it'll be one specific way of playing it on only maybe one or two maps because it's based off a specific instance that happened in the in the battle that, that's backing the story, basically. It's it's really a, a sandbox mod. So you're gonna you're gonna like we're giving you a very, very simple objective. You have two ships and you know tear yourself apart until somebody wins. The the way that you do it is totally open ended. You can do whatever you want. Um, uh, we're aiming for a, a 32 player um, count here. So we're we're trying to like you know all like the guns or the anti aircraft guns on uh, all the capital ships are gonna be probably automatic and controlled by AI. Uh, so that should really give it like a cinematic feel. So you're like, you know, if you're bombing the enemy ship and there's an uh, anti-aircraft fire flying everywhere. So that's that's really to keep like really get get that cinematic feel like you're in a huge battle, but you really don't have that many people playing. I was just looking at your uh, homepage over here, and I constantly look at your homepage because, of course, I think it's going to be a great mod. So I'm always looking up for media updates on my website, and I just noticed you guys updated your media looks like well today and you guys got a lot of nice stuff on there new weapons and actually a ship on there which looks very good and uh, again I just can't wait to try this out and it will be posted on my site very soon Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much a short review of the mod. We, there's no way I can like explain everything that we've been brainstorming about in like the. Well, time we do that have we a have. decent amount of time, so. <laughs> well, that's true, but uh, I mean, like we have we have plans for like you know there's gonna be different ships. You're gonna have your different situa map situations, and you just basically a free for all. Um, uh, should be really nice. We're gonna we're trying to like mul like really merge multiple genres in here. Uh, like our space combat, we're really like trying to focus on a, a free space or, or freelancer type control system, where you're going to be really um, like using like we're going to try to make mouse flying like you know the de facto. So you won't really need a joystick to play this mod, but if you want to use your joystick, you're going to have the option to. Uh, we're going to take uh, the the combat inside ships. It's going to be a uh, very uh, I don't know Haloish feel kind of kind of to it. So you're gonna have your grenades, and you're gonna have uh, all that stuff. And the capital ship combat is like for the strategic player who really wants to uh, get in there and uh, you know control his team and be the leader and decide on strategies and you know flank the from the left and you know whatever. We also we even have like a uh, might even have resources, mind you. This comes in to play later in the game. So your kill ratio is gonna determine. Um, how much prestige you get, which is kind of our currency that we have, since uh, there's no way like the captain is gonna like table the budget for for his fleet there. So, so you're gonna get your prestige, and the more prestige you have, the more your commanding officers are willing to give you things. So you're gonna be able to purchase a uh, few upgrades and uh, some like you might even be able to purchase new ships, uh, Corvette class ships, which are like kind of the the in between between capital ships and uh, the small tactical ships. So you're gonna be able to do that. Uh, on specific ships in specific instances, and it's really going to give uh, strategic depth to the entire game. 
that's definitely one of the reasons we're really excited about the Half-Life 2 uh, platform, you know, that we've been hearing about for a while is, um, you know, we really have a chance basically to, to really get across something that I think will really revolutionize uh, modding in the first place. I mean, all of us really are big fans of sport or, or of space sims like Free Space and Freelancer and Homeworld and whatnot and Story Driven and whatever. And then also, you know, being able to combine that with a first-person shooter, you know, it's just it, it'll give people so much of a, a way to really, you know, take teamwork um, and and really they can come from different backgrounds. You know, they can be a hardcore you know flight sim player or a or a good, you know, first-person shooter, sniper, whatever. There's going to be different classes for each, you know, ground troop and whatever. But they can come from these different backgrounds and work on their teamwork, you know, and be able to have, like, just this this really strategic, you know, feel to, to where you're not so worried about, you know, is this person, if I can't aim very well, you know, maybe I can fly well or maybe I can command well and everything. You can just take many different people and, and, and really create, like, this, this tie together in one simple game, you know, one simple war to, to basically you know, play the map and whatnot. And if you just tuned in, we're talking with Bush and Mad Mech Warrior from Eternal Silence. Uh, their website is www.eternal-silence.net. Again, that's www.eternal-silence.net. And, and I made the uh, website. And Bush made the website. And we're also broadcasting live from uh, GameShout.net. That's IRC.GameShout.net. We're in the radio channel. If you have any questions, uh, send them our way. Heading a pot design, eh? Yeah, that's a, uh, a team between me and uh, Mad Mac Warrior and a couple friends of mine. It's so awesome. Gotta, you like our logo, don't you? <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, that gotta, was uh, created by a friend of mine. I got another question here from Bongo, our, one of our IRC uh, users. He's asking, will the fi ships fly in a zero-G environment, uh, such as when you're, move when you're already moving forward, to turn around, do you have to thrust the opposite direction to slow down? Uh, no, we won't. We're gonna work uh, more like um, free space, whereas you'll you'll gradually slow down. You're gonna have your automatic like forward thrusters that will uh, automatically come into action and slow your ship down. So, so uh, there won't be any of that like you know asteroid type thing where you're just flying around and you're going in one direction and you're shooting in like behind you. There, none of that. It's gonna be uh, really free space like. I don't. I don't know if anybody's played that game, Free Space or Free Space 2. It's an old game. It's really one of the best space sims uh, out there right now. And uh, that's what we're basing our, our ship coming back on. Our ship combat on. Oh, yeah, I've played it. Yeah, Free Space it's a, is really good. It's a great game. I've actually done something for Half Life itself. So I might look you up later if I do anything with HL2. I've actually done like a Descent clone. I'd like to point out, too, um, for those of you out there that maybe uh, do have an interest in the mod or anything, we have forums at our website, and we've already got a small community going, and uh, uh, we're totally free, you know, um, we're trying to create a nice community where you can basically come in, post your ideas, you won't get flamed or anything, we're, we're, there's no flaming on our boards, but you can come in there and, uh, you know, suggest your ideas, we've got a thread on there for giving your ideas, whatever they're about, any ideas, uh, we take them, we put them in a list, and they're easily accessible for all our team to look at, so... You know, if you got an idea, you can come in there, suggest it, and talk to the team and whatever. We read the forums a lot. Um, it's just a good way to, to be a part of the mod. Yeah, we've actually taken a few ideas from the community. Uh, notably, um, uh, pods to go between the ships. Because initially, you, were, you would take a gunship, a uh, tactical ship there, and load it up with, like, six marines and fly over to the other side. But, uh, uh, like, we all know we probably get blown up in the hangar, so uh, we think um, adding pods to go across would be a pretty good idea, and we got that from the community, so uh, if you would like to contribute, just go ahead in the forums and post your idea. Got a question from IRC. Are you going to be able to go from ship to ship in the first person? Um, what do you mean by that, first person? 
Is this strictly a multiplayer mod? Yeah, right now it's strictly multiplayer. We, we're thinking of maybe a, a single player that might tie into the story, but it's really um, if in the far future there. It's, it's not coming in anytime soon. We really want to concentrate on the multiplayer aspect of it, getting the gameplay down um, pretty good, and uh, just trying to make a good game rather than like you know worrying about the story and uh, how it ties into uh, this character and all that. We're really just going for gameplay. And if you have a question, we're on irc.gameshout.net, and we're in the radio channel. I'd just like to uh, um, chime in here, uh, as some of you may or may not know. Anyway, I'm in charge of writing the story for the mod, and uh, I'm basically taking it very seriously because, um, well, well, Matt McCrory was saying, and, and he is right on that, is that he's really um, wants to work on the gameplay and everything. Whereas with me, I'm I'm just waiting, you know, for the SDK to come out, and, and I'm letting him stay in charge of the gameplay. But for me, I'm really trying to, you know, conjure up a story here. We've got a whole idea going for it and everything. And and if you've ever played games before that have a you know a good amount of lore to the background of them, and, and you're in the game and you're playing them, and you can you know come across things like things, for example, maybe Morrowind, where there's just tons of lore just you know all in it and everything. And and it, I just think it adds a certain depth to a game. So basically what I'm going to be trying to do is, is take this, this story concept we've got, which basically explains the whole, um, the whole reason why there's the battle between the United Terran forces and the Galactic Militia, which are the two different sides in the, in the mod. And it explains it, and it develops a few characters and whatnot. And what it'll do is allow you to you know, uh, play, play the mod and, and you know, feel like you're really taking part in a specific battle that happened in the story. So you can go up and you know, maybe read up on it and see what really happened in it and see the characters that were involved. And like we said, uh, like Mad McCrory was saying, you know, we're definitely possibly considering, and this is definitely would be far down the road, if even, but we're possibly considering, you know, developing the story on later on so that those that were interested in the story can go and play maybe a single-player version and kind of go through really everything that happened in the story in more of a personal sense with personal characters. But So uh, I'm here to definitely to try and add some depth to the content, you know, aside from just we've got our art team to make some good-looking content. I want to add some depth um, in lore and and, uh, you know, explanations behind battles rather than just, you know, this battle, that battle, you know, well, what's the point? Yeah, but we're definitely taking it slowly. We're going one step at a time. We're not going to, like, uh, rush all of this and, uh, you know, present you with a crapped up mod there. We're definitely going one step at a time. We're going to start with the infantry combat. Uh, after that, we're going to go straight uh, to the ship combat. And then after that, we're going to implement the captain and the, cap and the capital ship systems. So we're really trying to take it one step at a time. Um, really just make a good mod. Another question from IRC. How long do you think it'll take to make an alpha beta release after Half-Life 2 uh, is released? Um, well, we're hoping to get the SDK early. We're talking with Valve. Um, it's definitely going to take a while before we have a full like beta release with feature complete. But we're going to try to do some periodic alpha releases. Uh, probably have some testers set up they will, uh, you know, we're taking it one step at a time. So we're going to go start start the weapons in the infantry combat, and we're going to balance out the weapons in the infantry combat, and then we're going to move on to the ship combat, and then after that, the capital ships and the captain. So it's going to be it's going to be a probably a really long process, and um, we're going to take it one step at a time. Just do it good, and uh, we're going to have testers along the way. But uh, beta release is probably quite a ways off. Has the Half-Life 2 delay uh, helped you guys uh, with this mod? Well, <laughs> we were hoping to get the SDK uh, one month before uh, Half-Life 2 is released, like uh, Valve said, so that would have given us a kind of a head start. But um, with the delay of the game, the SDK was delayed also, so uh, we're just kind of waiting on that. We're on the list for, uh, on, on Valve's list for the SDK there, so we're going to get it one of the first we're gonna get it first and we're gonna get it uh, early so we're definitely gonna get like the coding is the main part of the mod right now because uh, this is not a mod that really relies on content you know we have a pretty reasonable amount of weapons 10 weapons there it's not like it doesn't take forever to model and skin so what's like we're not going for a huge weapon library rather. we're just going the really long part of the mod is gonna be the coding and the implementation of all these features that we have planned 
I would like to say, though, um, I definitely think that while Mad McWarrior is definitely right, um, I'm really glad because that we do have this uh, extra time, actually, because I think it's it's allowing us, you know, to get to have our art team together and, and to be producing content, and to be going over concept work and stuff like that. So, so we can really have a better idea in our heads about, you know, when we do finally get to coding, um, what exactly, you know, we're going to be doing. I mean, like like I said about the community, we've got people giving us ideas. So it means when it comes down to coding, you know, we can have ideas we've already said yes for sure on, and and you know, start coding them right away, rather than having to deal with things like working so hard with the art, you know, depart with our art people and. Um, you know, working on gameplay, finalizing gameplay or everything. We're having this time to really finalize and, and prepare things before, so when we finally do get our hands on the SDK, we can just go to work right away. So I think that's definitely a bonus. Um, the Really, the biggest downside for me and Mad Mech Warrior, at least, is we're very anxious to get our hands on the SDK, so for us, it's kind of like, eh, you know, when are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? Because we're both very anxious to start getting working on this. What's that list you speak of? Um... Can't tell. I uh, can't say, man. <laughs> uh, I'll give you five dollars. <laughs> I'll put another Maybe five dollars. I thought that that's monopoly money. <laughs> you trying to con us, boy? I'll give you Canadian Tire money. Come on, that's not worth anything. <laughs> sure it is. Another question from IRC. Will there be any mission-based type play, uh, like a team has to control a certain amount of resources or defend a space station? Um, that's probably going to be more in the single-player part of it. What we're going to do in the, in the multiplayer is really give you a situation where, we, where like, the story gives you the context that you know, you're, you're here to attack the space station or whatever. But we're going to leave, leave you totally open-ended on how you do that. Um, there probably will be a few objective missions where, like, you have to defend a transport as it moves across the map, kind of like the VIP uh, Counter-Strike thing. Uh, those are a few maps, but uh, most of the time it's going to be really open-ended. We're trying not to, like, limit the way that you can finish the game, so we're really trying to, you know, give you the choice. If your captain wants to do a certain strategy, he can do that. It's, he's not going to be limited by, by the map to, to do that. One thing, though, that was actually suggested on our forums, which was, a, I thought, a very cool idea, is um, the possibility of, of a mini-campaign multiplayer maps, where you could have, you know, an open-ended <clears throat> type of campaign in uh, multiplayer, and depending on the outcome of that, it depends on, say, like, a, a n another level you go to afterwards. So instead of, say, a random map, uh, you know, lineup or whatever, you could have, say, a, a specific, like, little mini-storyline lineup where you start this one map, you play through it, and depending on who wins, it depends on what you have to do next. Like, let's say you have to, you know, defend a certain base. And if you fail, then, say, the next map is you have to um, fight your way through, like, the reinforcements that are sent or something like that. And then versus that is they send new reinforcements, you've got to defend it again. Something like that. Basically just to give it a little, um, almost a single-player or, or campaign feel in multiplayer, which uh, I think would be very cool. And that's one idea that, that was suggested on our boards. So we thank the community for that. Got a question. Uh, what game provided you with the most influence, uh, such as Wing Commander, TIE Fighter, Mace Griffin? Um, for the well, the first part of the gameplay was really the, the space combat. Um, that was really what really inspired us. There was uh, Free Space Two, which we played over just to get an idea of like remi uh, refresh our memories on that. Um, for the infantry combat. It's really uh, mostly Halo because that game kicks ass. Um, I'd actually, I'd actually say it's probably more Battlefield 1942, being that that was the first uh, mod that Mad Mech Warrior was working on, Eternal Silence One, because this is the second attempt at it, a new story and everything. But basically, this is the second attempt at it. But I definitely say a lot of that is uh, stemmed from Battlefield, and then Halo when it came out, or Halo not when it came out, but I mean Halo definitely had an impact too. Yeah, and uh, for the capital ship combat, definitely Homeworld and Homeworld 2. Um, I've played both, and they both kick ass, so... Uh, that, I remember Wing Commander. I, that used to be one of my favorites. I played, I yeah, think, Wing, Com Wing Commander 4. That was really fun. I definitely liked that. 
Oh good yeah. To, uh, I was lucky enough to play all the uh, installments of the Wing Commander series, and uh, that I just really, really had a lot of fun playing those games. I loved uh, how Wing Commander Four had like two or three hours of uh, video that came along with it. Yeah, the version oh, I, I had was actually games. on DVD. Yeah, they were. Uh, that's when those type of movies and DVDs were were just coming out because uh, I I played Wing Commander three and then they were talking about four and how great you know it was gonna it was gonna be and all sorts of new technology. Rock and roll McDonald's. What? That just killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Total okay. um, No, no fans of Wesley please. Willis here? Nail in the coffin. Actually, uh, McDonald's is is one of our new sponsors. You're kidding, you're right? Kidding. What? Please tell me you're kidding. Free Not big kicks for all. What if the McDonald's makes the Half-Life mod? Now that would be interesting. It would it would probably be very fattening. But it would probably involve hamburger. <laughs> hamburger man, you need hamburger. Ah, I can't talk. Forget me. Oh yeah, and the clone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can't beat their French fries though. Man, the yeah, would, the, would the expansion packs be called value meals? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, if you come out to California, you'll find a lot better fast food places like Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. is good. In and Out Burger. Now that's In and Out Burger. Joint. Totally, man. I love In and Out Burger. I went out there when I was in San Francisco, had a burger there. It was very good. It's a bit of a suggestive name, though, don't you think? And W. Well, it was San Francisco, so. Ugh. Popeyes. Popeyes has the best fries ever, hands down, though. Just watch out for the special sauce. I like the special sauce. <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> oh, you know what makes it special. Yeah! The pickles? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the special pickle? There's lots of special pickles in it. Okay, guys, let's get back on subject here. Yes, but every IQ pickle is, is a special slowly, pickle. Slowly dropping. Uh, <laughs> we start, we we started a big feud in the IRC channel. They're all Sam McDonald's, Burger King, Checkers. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody mentioned Harvey's. Hardee's I did. is good. Wait, did you say Hardee's? Hardee's and Roy Rogers. Say, I love that. Harvey's. Place. Harvey's, not Hardee's. Hardee's is like good Arby's. though. Arby's is good. Arby's is good. No, it's crap. <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> oh, just sucks. Well, I'm actually a chef for a living, and uh, I can tell you there's no better fries than making your own, baby. I agree with that, actually. Does it count if you just take them out of a bag and put them in the oven? <laughs> Well, Only if you solve it sparingly. You, you might have addressed this before, but I I might have missed it. How many players are you looking at for this mod? 32, 64? 32. Yeah, we're going 32. Um, if Half-Life will allow us to go 64, we'll set the limit at 64, but we're really designing it for 32. Uh, do you have any plans for persistent world gaming? Nope, none of that. Uh, we're not going to go into any like server linking or anything like that. Uh, too complicated. Uh, it's going to cost us a ton of money, so we're just going to go uh, just the standard server client 32 player thing. That's interesting. I, I think you are the, the the first mod that we've had on Half Life Radio that's that's actually focused on the uh, 32 users plus. Oh, actually, I take that back. I think High Octane is also. 
I think well, high I, octane they, was going for uh, server linking, like persistent world. Yeah, that's correct. They were planning on doing the the cluster server clustering, uh, linking whatever you want to call it. Um, I know they said that last time they were on. Um, but yeah, I think I think you guys are one of the first ones that say that you're looking at doing more than 32 if that's available. One thing, though, I'd like to point out is um, since 32 is a pretty big number, not everybody, I'm sure, will be able to support uh, that you know number if they're running the server off their cable modem or something. I'm sure we'll have to um, make certain adjustments or, or give some kind of way for those that can't support as many players still have fun. Because if you've ever played mods that are aimed for at least a decent amount of players and you play on a low-player server, it's just no fun. You're basically bored until people join. So... Hopefully we'll we'll be able to put something on there to at least you know give a little enjoyment to those that can't support all that or or maybe you know if you're playing at a LAN or something. Yeah, we'll try to put a few eight to sixteen player mops in there, maybe urban mops or something. Got a, another question here from our good friend Bongo. He's asking how are the captains chosen in the game? Um, that's one of the points that are explained in the well that is explained in the uh, design document. But basically, um, we're not we're gonna go for uh, it's by score. Um, so the first the top player there is gonna be asked, uh, do you want to become the captain? He says yes or no. If he says no, it goes on to the next player, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, every uh, ten or fifteen minute intervals, you're gonna get a voting screen if you wanna keep your keep your captain or kick him out. So if the majority votes to keep the captain. There won't even be uh, that that procedure. If if no, uh, if they want to kick him off, though, then it's going to go into the scoring thing. What about having some sort of command to just get one of those voting sessions uh, started in case people don't feel like waiting ten to fifteen minutes? Because I know I'd just leave if you got like a bad captain. I'd just go to another server or something. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have that, but the 15 minute thing is automatic. So uh, you're gonna be able to, definitely gonna be able to vote uh, anytime you want there if if the captain really sucks. But uh, 10 to 15 minutes, you're probably gonna have some servers that want to rotate the captain more often. Uh, some servers that really want to keep the entire the captain for the entire game. So it's entirely up to the uh, server admin for that. Cool. Pickles. This new uh, server linking and clustering is really uh, interesting. Well, it's, I, I'd say it's it's kind of a natural progression when you think about it. MMOs and and you know persistent worlds and one have become so popular in the last uh, about five years. I'd say. Um, that's that's really just a natural thought for anyone that, that's trying to expand, you know, their horizons for being able to develop mods or support this or that. So um, I'm sure that's one other thing that really is exciting about the Half-Life 2 mod platform is it's offering so many different, um, you know, possibilities. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm actually really excited about playing around with is uh, I've been working with servers and networking for years, and now that it's coming up to clustering, I I think I'm going to get a lot of enjoyment just building servers on some of these mods that are created for it. And it'll give me hours of fun time just making the servers. The main problem Woo with uh, server clustering there is, uh, first of all, the cost for us. Because we're, we're either going to have to pay for the, those huge servers that we're linking together ourselves, or we're going to have to get a sponsor to pay for them. So that's one of the things. And that also means your mod has to like prove itself before it gets those mods. No sponsors, because no sponsor is gonna like, um, you know, hand out like dozen servers to, to a mod that's not even that popular. So the main problem with that is actually building up the community. The one way that I could see it happening is different server, just server admins like myself. I uh, run a new site and we run a server from there, and just maybe some of the different server admins could just donate a portion of their um, space just like they would with any other mod that they have on and just somehow cluster them together any anyone that's on this network if you possibly could do that but I'm not sure I'd have to look more into the details of their clustering that's going to be available for Half-Life 2 it's also a huge logistical nightmare I mean you look at MMOs and they don't get bunk free after uh, 
until like one or two years after their release. I mean, it's it's crazy. So we'd rather just like stay away from that and go with the classic uh, 32 to 64 player thing. I don't blame you at all. Any more questions? Well, I'm getting a... Let's see. I'm, I've been getting a lot of questions, but they're the, the same one that, same ones that have already been answered. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing here. A lot of different Well, we repeats. don't mind being redundant. I just like hearing my voice go across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot for the people who were, uh, weren't here before. I don't care. I have time to burn. Among other things. Like houses. Love burning houses. Well, if you have, if you do have a question, we are on GameShout.net, IRC.GameShout.net. We're in the radio channel. We got time for a few more questions, and uh, we're speaking with uh, uh, Mad Mac Warrior and Bush from the in Eternal Silence mod. Eternal Silence mod. This is strictly Half Life Two, right? Yeah, definitely. It also means you won't be able to play it for a while, but, uh, you know, we're hoping that the experience will be worth the wait. And we're hoping that this means we'll actually be able to, you know, work on something good rather than having, you know, rushed things go out the door like what was ultimately the final uh, thing that killed uh, the first Eternal Silence attempt. Well, that and we... Battlefield just sucks. <laughs> Amen to that. Got a question from IRC. What melee weapons uh, will be in the game? Uh, we don't have any like specific knife or anything planned yet, but we're probably just gonna go with, uh, you know, whacking your stock at uh, your your gun there at uh, like pistol whip or whatever. You just it's gonna be like Halo there, where you just press like the a certain button and uh, you whack the guy. So. I wouldn't doubt, though, maybe the infiltrator or hacker, whatever, you know, who's basically working around stealth would have some sort of ability like that, being that he is supposed to be very, very sneaky. Uh, just real quick, Andy, did you get that um, question from Z3PX? Yeah, so did I. I got the same one from him. Okay, Z3PX and everybody else out there, and, and I know this is what he did because I got it the same time that Andy read it. And I was actually going to read that question for once, but don't send your question to every op in the channel. That's not very nice. I feel so left out. I didn't get that question. Well, uh, Mar write his name down, because uh, he's not getting any ice cream tonight. Put him on the blacklist. So what's the question? No punch and pie? Nope, no punch and pie. I like punch and pie. Uh, I've got a question that just occurred to me when you were talking about uh, melee stuff. Um, will any of the infantry type people be able to wander out into space and like attack the outside of ships with their guns? That could be messy. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, none of the infantry have uh, any spacesuits or anything, so basically you jump off the ship and you're in a vacuum and you die and your body floats out for everybody to see and laugh at you. <laughs> I love it. Humiliation. You know, instead of having admins have the option to llamify people and stuff like with admin mod, you could build that in, so anybody that's attacking or something, you could launch them out into space. Jettison them. Oh, I'm sure my evil side will, you know, put in something in there for, you know, the, the evil, corrupt admin. You Yay! could send them into a black hole. <laughs> oh, that'll definitely be fun, you know. Reduced to the size of, like, two molecules. Or turned into a giant phallic unicorn. Uh, speaking of black <laughs> holes... Speaking of black holes, do you guys have any plans for, like... Uh... Uh... Cosmic... 
objects or interference type things, like uh, the nebulas that you found in uh, Freelancer, for instance? We might have something like that, but it's definitely going to be uh, like map specific. Uh, it's not, and like black holes, you know, you you won't get sucked in by black holes. If you're gonna have a black hole, it's gonna be far away in the skybox, because uh, I mean, if you had a black hole next to you, you probably wouldn't be fighting there in the first place. We did get a suggestion though from the community about uh, uh, asteroid fields and about you know them being hard to navigate for fighters, adding an extra challenge on certain maps. So I'm sure we will add something like that, and maybe even uh, this was also suggested. I think I think it was suggested by uh, Yagwer, if that's how you pronounce it. Anyway. Um, it wasn't Jaeger. Anyway, um, which was, you know, putting inhabitable bases in, like, asteroids or something so that you can, you know, na uh, being attempted to, uh, ah, you can attempt to navigate these asteroid fields and maybe have to, you know, fight off people hidden in them or something like that, just to add some extra flair to the, you know, the flying portion of it on some maps. You guys aren't going to have any kind of wormhole travel? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're trying to base ourselves off, like, um, like scientific theories that are basically maybes today, but uh, they actually come into uh, into play later on or in the story. So basically, like your your interstellar traveler, which would take years, you know, uh, it gets it gets reduced down to minutes because of these things called super strings, which basically uh, zigzag around the universe, and uh, inside them, light speed is multiplied. So so when you're like touching a super string, you go way faster than the speed of light with your normal engines. So that's basically how interstellar travel works in Eternal Silence. And you won't have wormholes. Okay. Aww. You know we're going to get a lot of questions about this next Thursday on Sci-Fi Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we won't have lasers. Aww. Uh, there's no lasers? I look on your ship's weapons and everything's in laser. Light laser, medium laser, heavy laser... And well, uh, and the list that's goes a mistake. Down. That's a mistake. Our, our uh, PR guy is really pissed off that we don't have lasers, so he's going around editing all the pages. Please don't do not pay attention to those. Hey, that is sounds really? like me. <laughs> we should burn him at the stake. Laser is really code for fly swatter. That actually sounds like stuff I do on the Stargate mod when they don't do something I ask them to. I start changing things around. It's kind of fun. But yeah, we're not we're not trying to take too far of a you know a leap away from reality. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a space sim. You got to have that little, you know, uh, sci-fi thing going for you. But we're not we're not trying to take the too traditional path of you know lasers and this and that and whatever. We're trying to make it because it's going to be more concentrated on you know the gameplay and and the, since the story is backing it, you know, we're trying to make it somewhat realistic. Um, and also, there will definitely and definitely not not be aliens. If anyone asks that, no aliens. We get that asked repeatedly, and uh, we're definitely not getting aliens. What about Star uh, lightsabers? That's real. It came from Star Wars. I saw it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> TV never that lies. Was propaganda. Right. <laughs> propaganda. No, no lightsabers. If you see a guy with a lightsabers, uh, with lightsabers, chances are he's cheating. So uh, don't walk up to him. I don't want a lightsaber. <laughs> Or, or, or it's probably just me taking advantage of some Easter egg I put in there, you know, so I can go on my own servers and own people. Well, if you just tuned in, we've been talking with uh, uh, Bush and Mad Mac Warrior from the mod Eternal Silence. It's a Half Life 2 modification. We've got to take a quick break. And uh, you guys have time to hang out, right? Yeah, I got plenty of time. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and uh, uh, replay that Ghost Freeman sing-along that he uh, made. We don't know when it was recorded, but a lot of people keep missing it. Uh, you know, all the people that come in and out tuning into the radio. So, uh, yes, we are going to play it again.